Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the middle cranial fossa. This tutorial follows on from the first tutorial on the anterior cranial fossa. So I've removed the parietal bones, and we are now looking at a superior view of the skull base. The middle cranial fossa essentially consists of the sphenoid and the temporal bones. In terms of its boundaries, the anterior border in the midline is formed by the anterior edge of the chiasmatic sulcus, which is this groove stretching between the optic canals. Anterolaterally, the middle cranial fossa is separated from the anterior cranial fossa by the posterior borders of the lesser wings of the sphenoid. I've just rotated the model so that you can see how the lesser wing hangs over and covers parts of the anterior and lateral parts of the middle cranial fossa. Coming back to the superior view and looking at the posterior boundary of the middle cranial fossa, we can see that the lateral part of the posterior border is made up from this bony ridge, which is formed by the superior border of the petromastoid part of the temporal bone. I've rotated to a slightly oblique view so that you can appreciate the contour of this boundary. The posterior boundary of the middle cranial fossa is formed in the midline by this bony ridge called the dorsum celli. So let's now take a look at some of the important features and landmarks within the middle cranial fossa. The majority of the key features are found within the sphenoid bone, so we'll take a look at this first. The parts of the sphenoid that form the middle cranial fossa are the centrally elevated body of sphenoid and the greater wings, which are depressed on either side. Looking at the model from a slightly oblique posterior view, you can see the relationship of the elevated central body to the greater wings on either side. This lower lateral part of the middle cranial fossa contains the temporal lobes of the brain. I've removed the brain now, and we have a lateral view of the skull, with the temporal bone removed. If I zoom in a bit, we can see this saddle-shaped structure at the upper aspect of the centrally raised body of sphenoid, which is called the cella tersica. This is the Latin for Turkish saddle, which is the name given due to its distinct morphology. The central deep area is called the hypophyseal fossa, which contains the pituitary gland. The anterior wall of the cella tersica is called the tuberculum celli. Arising from the corners of this anterior wall, are these small little bumps, the middle clinoid processes. We saw in the last tutorial that the anterior clinoid process is formed from the medial aspect of the lesser wing of the sphenoid and is part of the anterior cranial fossa. The posterior clinoid processes are the rounded projections at the top of the posterior wall of the cella tersica, which is known as the dorsum celli. You can appreciate its structure nicely from this lateral view. Lateral to the body of the sphenoid are the greater wings, which contain four openings known as foramina and fissures, which transmit various different structures from the skull base into the face. Just as a point regarding some of the anatomical terminology, a foramen is any opening which allows different structures to pass to another compartment or part of the body things like nerves, arteries and veins. Foramen, or foramina plural, are typically rounded or oval discrete openings. A fissure is like a foramen, but it's more of an elongated cleft or groove. A fossa comes from the Latin ditch, and this is a depression or a hollow. Structures don't pass through a fossa, they sit within these fossae. We've seen the hypophyseal fossa which is where the pituitary sits. I will do a separate tutorial on the structures that pass through these openings in the skull base, but for now we will just familiarise ourselves with their location and configuration. Let's start medially and work laterally looking at the different openings. The first opening is hiding underneath the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and is called the superior orbital fissure. As you can see, it separates the greater wing from the lesser wing. Posterolateral to this, is this round opening called the foramen rotundum. Posterolateral again from this is an oval-shaped opening, 
called the Foramen Ovale. And moving posterolateral again is the Foramen Spinosum. Just posterolateral to the hypophyseal fossa is the Foramen Lacerum. This structure is actually closed by a cartilaginous plug in life. Structures like the internal carotid artery pass across this structure, but they don't pass through it. Extending laterally and posteriorly from the foramen lacerum is this groove on the superior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone, which is the groove for the greater petrosal nerve, which is a branch of the facial nerve. There is also a shallower groove for the lesser petrosal nerve just anterior to this, but it's not visualised well on this model. We will learn more about the intricate internal anatomy of the temporal bone in tutorials on the middle and inner ear structures. So that completes the anatomy of the middle cranial fossa. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at the posterior cranial fossa. If you have found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.